idcwoodcraft.com. Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and welcome to this short video about surfacing bits. In this video, you're going to learn a bit about surfacing bits, how they're used, the different applications, and about the settings that you want to take into account and some precautions you want to think about when you're using this type of bit. As a brand new CNC router owner, surfacing bits are one of those necessities that you have to have. You don't always use them very much, but you have to have this bit in your arsenal for the various things that you absolutely have to do when you have a CNC router. So you're going to learn all about this in this video. Now two things I want to say before we get into the video. Number one is I was actually creating this video for a very specific bit, this specific surfacing bit, which is called the big fat bottom surfacing bit. It's a wide body bit that covers a lot of real estate really fast. And so I was shooting a video for those who got hold of the bit so they'd know how to set it up. But I realized as I was creating the video and editing it that I was providing a lot more information for you as a new CNC router owner that you will want to know about. So I inserted this little introduction and have made this video public to you. So just so you know, this video is discussing a lot about the specific bit, but it has a lot of detail in it about surfacing bit usage in general. So with that, we're going to get into the video. One more thing, down in the description is all the information that you need to know about surfacing bits, including their settings. So make sure after the video, you go down to the description and check that out. And of course, there'll be a link to the IDC Woodcraft store for the surfacing bits that are in the store. All right, let's get into the video. Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and you've come to this brief video where I'm going to talk to you a bit about the big fat bottom one and a half inch diameter surfacing bit from IDC Woodcraft. Now in this video I'm going to be talking to you a bit about the technical specs of the bit and how to set it up for your CNC projects and how you want to be using it depending on the type of CNC router that you have. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what a surfacing bit is for and why the big fat bottom one and a half inch surfacing bit is one that you may want to consider putting in your bit collection and using. Surfacing bits are used generally for three different purposes. The first is to flatten your spoil board when you either get a new router or you're going to recondition your spoil board or replace your spoil board. So this is the spoil board is where your project gets clamped down to or held down. That spoil board needs to be parallel with the motion of the CNC router. And so a surfacing bit will clean off the surface of the spoil board. The second use is when you have raw lumber that has been milled very rough and you want to smooth it out, get a nice baby bottom finish on it so you can carve into it. Surfacing bits are meant to clean up that material. These are called slab bits or slab flattening bits. Also when boards are warped you can use a surfacing bit to technically unwarp it. Another little benefit that you can use a surfacing bit for is if you have a botched project and it's on good wood and you want to recover what you have left, you can use a surfacing bit to remove the botched area and start over. So that's what a surfacing bit is for. So now let's talk about the one and a half inch big fat bottom surfacing bit and why it's so advantageous. First of all, the advantage of this bit is number one, it is a heavy bit, which means it has a lot of mass, and a lot of mass means less opportunity for vibration, deflection, what have you. What I mean by deflection is when a bit is doing work, it actually has forces working against it, and that bit will want to deflect a little bit. But it's just a natural thing that happens with all cutting tools. The other thing is, is that because it's such a wide body bit, you can remove a lot of material really fast, and you have wider cleaning surfaces. So number one, your, your cleanup gets done much faster. Number two, you have a much cleaner surface because you're working with such a wide bit. So now let's talk a little bit about the specs. What you're looking at is 
a one and a half inch diameter surfacing bit. This particular bit is considered a brazed tip bit and it has four flutes. Brazed tip means that the cutting edges, the carbide tips are brazed onto a different type of steel. In this case, it is 4140 steel, which is a really strong steel. The reason we make bits like that is because carbide is very expensive and this helps reduce the cost of the bits. And that cost reduction can be passed on to you. Now we're going to talk about how to set your big fat bottom surfacing bit up properly depending on the CNC router that you have. And I will show you a demonstration of the bit in action. You'll see how fast it cleans up surfaces. The first thing you want to take into consideration is whether you have a benchtop CNC router like the long mill CNC router here, which is my recommendation for a first starter machine. And I'll have information down below in the description about that. In fact, everything I'm talking to you about, particularly about this bit, all the same information will be down in the description. So the first thing you need to take into account is whether you have a long mill or other CNC router that is a benchtop model or you have a floor model like the Phantom CNC router here. This bit is not intended to be used on desktop machines. Those are the ones that you can pick up, move around and put anywhere. This, those, those machines cannot handle this bit. The CNC routers like the long mill that have trim routers on them like the Makita or the DeWalt Ryobi, those routers only have so much power. And when you're getting into a bit this size, you have to take that into consideration because there's so much work being done on the bit that it can actually stall the router itself. So if you have a benchtop machine, you want to be careful with your depth of cut. Don't ever set your depth of cut past a 0.07 of an inch for the benchtop models that have trim routers. And your spindle speed for Makita needs to be set at about two. That's about 12,000 RPMs. And the other thing that's really important is the feed rate or how fast the bit is going to be passing through the material. You absolutely want to set it from 120 inches to 150 inches or even a little higher if you want to. But do not go slower than that because what you'll do is you will start to burn the wood and you will also start passing heat into the tips. And when you start passing heat into any kind of metal, you start to weaken it. So it has to be moving very fast through the material, particularly because there's such a high velocity on the outside of the cutter. So we'll just rehash, never go past 0.07 with a bench top when you have trim routers on it. And always go at least 120 inches per minute. Your step over will be set at 80 to 90%. I recommend with this bit, you set your step over to 90%. That will leave about that much material left when it comes back through. With these kind of bits, you never go less than 60% ever, ever, ever. You're, you're going to get a lot of burning, a lot of heat going into this. This thing needs to be cutting and actually pushing the heat that is creating when it's cutting to push that heat out through the chips. Now, if you have a machine like the Phantom CNC router, which is the floor model that I recommend if you're going to be getting into serious CNC, that has a much powerful a much more powerful spindle. Oh, wait a minute. If you have a two horsepower spindle on a bench top, then you can go deeper. You can go up to an eighth of an inch as far as depth per pass. This is very important. With trim routers, never go past 0.07 depth per pass. When you have two horsepower spindles, then you can go deeper up to an eighth of an inch. If you have three horsepower or higher, then you can go almost the full depth, which is a quarter of an inch. So when you have a, a, a the thing like this, the Phantom CNC router, you can take full depth of this bit. So remember, everything I've talked about is down below in the description. It's a great bit. It'll clean up your surfaces really, really fast. So let's take a look at a quick demo of this. What you're seeing is this bit is just ripping through this 10 inch piece of oak and you can see how clean the finish is, but what's even more interesting is how rapidly it actually gets through the material. You're seeing we're already past halfway through. So when you have such a large diameter bit, 
this is how fast that this thing can work for you. So with that, down below in the description are all the settings and a link to get back to the IDC Woodcraft store to get the one and a half inch big fat bottom surfacing bit. It's a good bit to have in your arsenal, especially if you're working with slabs and you need to get a lot of area cleaned up fast. IDCWoodcraft.com